I see him most nights. Um, he's got a routine, which is really sweet. Like, he walks into the front door and drops his keys down onto the tray and they nearly always miss. It's actually so endearing. Um, he works in the city, in the hospital, so his hours can be irregular, but I always try and make time for him and, you know, like, make myself presentable. I mean, he's been around bedpans and ill people and nurses all day. You probably aren't wearing perfume as nice as mine. You know, he just needs to be able to come home and relax in a calm environment. Um, so he walks in, drops his keys, and then he picks them up. Uh, and then he walks into the lounge and places his stuff at the foot of the armchair which is surrounded by books, like, I mean, surrounded, <laughs> and only by the armchair. He's got books on all topics. Uh, there's Grey's Anatomy, the science journal, not the Shonda Rhimes show with Dr Dreamy. Uh, there's Tolstoy, there's Stephen King, all topics. It's one of the things that attracted me to him, actually, his ability to be so well-read. Um, I actually went out and bought a copy of um, Anna Karenina, Oh, bloody hell, it was so difficult. But it made me feel even more attracted to him, knowing that he could get through it. Um, so then he walks into the kitchen and grabs a beer, normally like a fun craft one. And then he comes back and he just sits on the sofa and most nights he falls asleep there. And he just looks so peaceful. I mean, I could just watch him for hours. And sometimes I do. I've got my own craft beers here, so quite often I'll open one up as if we're in the same room. When I first moved here, I just thought it was such a shithole. Um, and then on my ninth morning here, I walked out the front door and Sadie was following me. Uh, and there he was, and he just smiled. And I was like, oh, maybe this ain't so bad after all. Oh, and the morning after that, he stroked Sadie. I mean, I wasn't outside at the time, but I could see through the window and he was so gentle with her. She doesn't normally like other people, so that is a really good sign. Since then, uh, we've crossed paths on numerous occasions. I mean, he occasionally goes out for a 6am run, which is difficult to be awake for when I've had to stay up the night before watching him. But on the whole, I'm awake whenever he is, which I also believe could be a sign. Since lockdown happened... Obviously, we haven't been able to see each other <clears throat> as much. And I know it pains him as much as it pains me because he said just before it happened, he was like, oh, well, I'll miss these little meetings. And I knew he meant it because he's not the kind of guy to lie. Um, and I just said, I'll miss you too. Anyway, he should be home any minute now because he left early today for a shift because he's been on mids this week. So I imagine he's agreed to cover for an extra shift or something because... He's really kind like that. Oh, hang on, here he is. He's coming. Let me just go grab my beer. So perhaps a little bit earlier than I would have liked, but I know he likes it when I wave and I've got a beer in my hand and he waves back because he's always holding a beer. Um, he dropped his keys. Classic. He's not picking them up. You dropped your keys. Oh, turn the lights on. I can't see you properly. He does this often. He stumbles in in the dark. It's a real inconvenience. I'm going to have to mention it and have a... Who's that? Who is she? <laughs> We're in a fucking lockdown. Who is she? Oh, uh, she's picked up the keys and put them in the tray. He's not put his stuff by the armchair. And he's clearing the books. She sat on the sofa. I've not been through the front door and she sat on the sofa. Oh, she's probably his sister. Oh, God, he's sitting next to her. Uh, two metres? And they've both got beers. Oh, OK, I should look away. I'm going to look away. What on earth is he doing? It's like we've got a connection and he's brought that home. I mean, he did do this right at the start, but we didn't know each other then. Does he not remember that he misses me? No, it's cool, I trust him. He won't ruin us, it's fine, I find he, he's... I trust him, I trust him. I trust him. Oh, they're kissing. Oh, oh my heart's going to explode. I can't feel my legs. How could he do... Who the fuck is she? I'll rip your fucking face off, you bitch! Oh, God, they're looking at me. Oh, no, the window's open. Oh, God. 
Oh God, I was shouting at the TV if they ask. They won't ask. It's okay, it's his fault, he bought a home. I can't feel my hands. Is this a heart attack? I think I might be having a panic attack. Oh, how could he do this? If he sees me on the street, you might ask. Oh God, I hope lockdown gets extended. Guy, Man, Guy by Sophia Chetanoina. I'm not the sort of person who sits in the sadness, you know. I'm a go out and get him kind of guy. Man. Guy. So I decided to take this as an opportunity to fulfill one of my life's greatest ambitions. That being to get in shape. To properly do it. You're not not in shape, my flatmate says. Sure, but I'm going to use this time to look fucking insane. Love Island level. Turn this four pack into an eight pack. Don't buy any more six packs, oi oi. Because I have to be careful. I'm not getting any younger. This beer belly is starting to look permanent. These arms are starting to feel a bit soft and these legs are wobbling. And I get a bit, I can't describe it. But the thought of me sitting on the sofa in front of the telly all day makes me feel... Oh, I can't describe it. Like I picture it as me sitting there and slowly I get bigger and bigger like I'm a balloon. And I keep going until I take up the room, like the whole fucking room. And I feel like well, surely I'm about to explode soon. And it's that feeling, the about to explode one. That makes me write out on the piece of paper I ripped down from the magnetic pad thing on my fridge, which she got me. It makes me write down isolation fitness plan. I get balls naked and look at myself in the mirror and I take a big red Sharpie I pinched during the last week of work and I circle the bits I want to change. My thighs, back, stomach, Biceps, triceps, forearms, dick. By the time I'm finished, I'm absolutely covered. And it's then that I remember that Sharpie doesn't wash off so easily, does it? My flatmate thinks I have a skin rash. I'm working out twice, sometimes three times a day. Morning run, 10k. Two lots of weight cycles and strength sessions. One after my run. One that afternoon. Alternating arms, back, legs, chest and abs days. Have a bath every evening. I feel strong when I feel tired. I've got all the equipment. Got in an Amazon. Even got a bench press in Argos. I'm doing 90. Was doing 50. I've got muscles in places I didn't even know existed. I suggest the flatmate comes and joins me you know, once or twice a week. Good for morale. I'm sorry, man. I've actually got to get back to work, he says, as he puts the milk back in the fridge. Full fat milk. They always say you've got to want to do it for you, not anyone else. And logically, I understand that because no one is going to get you up and at them unless it's you, for you. But after a few weeks, I realise what is pushing me on. What is getting me up? What's squeezing that last rep in when my arms feel like jelly? When I'm about to throw up, 
What's really pushing me is her, isn't it? It's me wanting to get in shape for her. It's those pics that I'll post, which she'll see on my story, and then she'll message me. Because, let's be honest, who isn't missing their ex during this time? Who isn't looking for an excuse to message, right? I just have to wait for the red marks to fade. Then there's food. I have all day to plan my meals. No more packed lunches or rush planning or getting home from work exhausted and ordering a pizza. I can take the time to cook the good stuff. So it's protein and lean fat and low carbs. It's no booze. It's no biscuits. And they're not wrong when they say abs are made in the kitchen. And if I feel like having something bad, I just look down at my weird red skin and I go, no, not today. And if I'm feeling like I really am wanting something, like when you're hungry in the back of your stomach, I go on her Instagram. You sure, man? It's two for Tuesdays. I wasn't bad to her. I bet that's what you're thinking. See a guy like me, big guy, and think, oh, well, must have been violent. She said she didn't have a good reason. She said I'd stop making her laugh. And that she stopped having a good time. And that she just... She was being honest. Stopped being in love with me. I don't buy it. Because that can't happen. That stuff doesn't happen overnight. Do you know what I think it was? Truth is, I let myself go, didn't I? I got too comfortable. Didn't keep myself the guy she met at the building's Christmas drinks. The man who wore a nice fitting 41-inch shirt even if it had a stain on it from the chocolate fountain. The man who could sit down without a bulge forming over his belt, who could do 50 push-ups with her on his back, who could give her piggybacks when she wanted, who could pick her up and kiss her. It's been four weeks since I started Isolation Fitness Plan. The red marks have faded, and I'm looking, well, I'm looking great. If I'm being honest, I'm looking peng. In these photos I take of myself in the mirror, I've got that V, I've got the arms. There is still room for improvement, there always is, but I have a good shot. I tweak it a little, give it the right filter, think of a funny caption. Can't think of one, so go for an emoji. And just before I upload it, I see that she's got a story. First time in ages, she's got a story. My heart goes crazy, and I reckon it must be in fat burning zone, so I think, good, maybe I'll have a beer later. Treat myself to a beer later. And I click on it, and it loads. And it's her, and this, this pudgy guy. And they're kissing. And she's posted Isolation Bay. And she looks very, I don't know. With this fat guy. With this ugly fat guy. What's his fucking name? Graham. Fucking fat Graham. How is she happy with him? She isn't. There's no way. I'm so much better looking than him. What's he got to offer that I don't? Honestly, look at me. What's he got to offer? I go to tell the flatmate, but he's on the phone to his mum. And he's talking quietly, and I don't know, I just listen. I'm not that sort of man, but this time I just... I hear him talking about how he has to leave the room when I come in. Saying I'm boring. Saying all I talk about is fitness stuff. Saying what a sad guy I am. I hate the word guy. I'm a man. I'm a man, not a guy. You have been listening to Guy Man Guy by Sophia Chetanoina, performed by Reuben Nathan. It was produced by Robert Thorpe Woods for Kick It Down Productions. It was directed by Paul Blinkhorn, with sound design and original music from Nicola Chang. The assistant director was Natalie Pulfer. Special thanks go to the Playground Theatre and BBC Writers' Room.
hey, L, I'm Sanjay. No, some people call me Jay. Gamer King Jay. Oh, yeah, it's an old username. So, where are you from, Gamer King Jay? Birmingham. Yeah. Oh, how come it's light where you are? Oh, because, Jay, it's daytime here in New York. Not that we're allowed out anymore. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. Did you know that there's approximately 3,800 miles of internet cable connecting us? I didn't. <laughs> Please, tell me more. So laid back in 2003, the fiber optic cable, it links the Cornish coastline to Fire Island in New York. Mm. You're messing with me. <laughs> no, it's okay, I get it. We have nothing in common. Um, tell me something about... Isolation, right? Oh, um, sorry. Swiping left, Sunday. Swiping left. Wait, 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 wait. Um, musicals. I, I love musicals. What? Yeah, you know, like Broadway. <laughs> well, see ya. No, I'm uh, I'm a dancer. <laughs> well, at least I was. I, I tried, and then with lockdown. At work right now, so. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh, uh, <laughs> good question. Um, honestly, I have no idea. Um, I have an immune deficiency thing, so I've been in isolation from the beginning. My um, creepy neighbour, he goes out and uh, does the shopping for me and comes back with this stuff. I can't complain though. Um, how long have you been in the States? About three years. Yeah. Moved from London and then haven't been able to afford to go back since. It's not like the movies. Now, I used to ignore ambulance sirens, but, but now they seem so much more significant. So much stuff we used to take for granted seems significant now. Yeah, and things we thought were important really aren't. I, I used to fight with my mum all the time about stupid things. I literally used to spend every day before isolation in isolation. I miss her and my dog. I want to get out more after this, you know, see the world, meet someone. And you should keep trying, you know, with the whole dancing thing. Don't give up on your dreams. How about you? What's your big post isolation dream? Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley? Yeah. You know, become a programmer, launch a tech startup. <laughs> or something. Hey, who knows? It's going to be a whole different world out there after this. Hey, do you know um, the word association? Yet? Um, like, you say a word and then I say the first word that comes into my head. Yeah, exactly. Go on, you go first. Come on, there's not much time. Uh, okay, um, isolation. Freedom. Dreams. Dancing. Musicals. Broadway. New York. America. England. Home. Home. 3,800 miles. 3,800 miles.